<laughs> okay, so <laughs> thank you for that trombone effect. Welcome to the Bring Your Own Advice for Learning Day 3 Google Hangout on the topic of curating. So I thought we'd very quickly just go through everybody and introduce themselves and say who, who they are and what they do. So I'll start, and then if we just work our way from the bottom right to the bottom left on the images, hopefully they're in the same order. <laughs> um, so my name's Stam Illingworth. Hi. I'm a lecturer in science communication at Manchester Metropolitan University, and I have an interest in bringing your own devices for learning because I think they're a really fantastic way of involving the student cohort and really starting up a two-way conversation and allowing learning to take place beyond the classroom, basically. So that's me. Sally, are you next? Uh, I'm not on my screen, but I'll go next. Um, I'm Sally Hanford from the University of Nottingham. I work in learning technology here. And um, Andrew came to an event that we ran and spoke, and he mentioned Bring Your Own Device for Learning, and I confess that I tried to take part last time and uh, failed to complete, so this time I'm really trying to uh, be on the ball. I have watched the videos, honestly. <laughs> so I'm just trying to be more participative this time than I was before. Super. And Mark? So Mark, obviously, we've just lost his connection briefly. Manda? Hello. Um, I'm Amanda Sykes. I'm um, an academic developer <coughs> based at Glasgow University um, and I guess my interest in this is about finding out about what's out there and what I can support to use in their teaching. Super. Magda? Hello, I'm Magda Bolber, also from Manchester Metropolitan University. I'm a lecturer in information and communications and interested in how I can bring mobile devices into my teaching to make it more interactive. Super. And Kay? Hi, I'm Kay. Um, I'm uh, from the University of Ulster, but I'm currently uh, in England. So. Uh, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm over here for a meeting, so I'm sort of supposed to be facilitating in Ulster, but I'm not quite there at the moment, which is the beauty of uh, BYID, I suppose. <laughs> Super. Um, so, Claire Chambers? Hi, I'm Claire. Um, I'm an e-learning coordinator in the School of Geography in, at the University of Nottingham. Uh, Sally is my colleague. Um, my interest in the device is around how I can facilitate the... Um, adoption of various tech and encourage the students to engage with us through their own devices. Obviously, it makes makes quite interesting um, potential really for use both within and beyond the classroom. Um, yeah, that's me. Brilliant. And Claire Spencer. Hello. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Claire Spencer, and I'm from the University of Bristol. Um, I'm in the Department of Accounting and Finance, which is part of Economics and Management. Well, uh, I teach management accounting to postgraduate and undergraduate, um, and also business ethics to postgraduate students. Um, so um, I've used a little bit of um, Poll Everywhere um, and a couple of other smaller tools like Bittle for audiovisual feedback for, but I've not used um, anything in lectures or in tutorials um, as a teaching aid. Um, so really, I'm here to learn about what's available and get my skill set up. <laughs> and to sort of help me think about how I might be able to use it um, to enhance the student experience. Super. And Catherine? Hi, um, I'm Catherine Vashuk. Um, I'm an e-learning support officer at Manchester Metropolitan University. Um, I am facilitating, well, co-facilitating a face-to-face -face session tomorrow with Magda. Um, I have an interest in... Um, obviously bring your own devices for learning, uh, helping academics embed those um, technologies such as Nearpod, Kahoot, Socrative into their teaching. That's me. Brilliant. And Mark, are you back with us now? Okay, Mark's obviously just dropped out again then. No worries. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to do a... Um, a screen share of 
the um, a very very brief agenda for today. So, if my computer allows that to go ahead, it's just in the process of trying to do that at the moment. Yeah, I can see that. Has that, okay. has that come up? Yeah. 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 Okay, super. So that yeah, that, so that's basically um, what I was uh, what we're hopefully planning on doing um, today. Just gonna start off by having. Um, quick introduction to ourselves, and then have um, mine's in mirrored format, which is quite interesting. Oh, there we go. And then just discuss about how we currently filter out useful sources. Um, come up with the top five filtering out useful sources to share on Twitter, and then discuss those scenarios, respond to them, prepare a group response, and then finish by discussing an app. So this is just working through those three um, things that people that were discussed by. Um, Students do in the bring your own device for learning um, work. So I thought what I've also done is I've also um, just prepared an open document um, that I'll that I'll share a link with um, with people in a second that we can just add to um, for the top five by the end. But before we do that, does anybody have any um, thing that they want to share, as in what they're Opinions and what what they understand to what we mean by when we say curating. Yeah, the term I think originally is used or was used in art galleries and museums. So the curator would be the expert um, that knows where and how to find works of art or the, the books and display them to, to the public. People, people are very happy to see you there, Michael. <laughs> Did just do? Uh, do people have any other um, definitions of how? How do people see curating in a digital format? Um, I, I think that's quite interesting. That idea that the curator is the expert, and I think as we move into the digital world, that expertise is not necessarily, you know, in the hands of the curator. You know, I think there's more opportunities for everybody to contribute to the curation, um, you know, and then we get sort of a more constructive expertise. Super. So if, you, if, you, if people look on their chat, which is on the right-hand side, I've just added a link to a Google document uh, that people can add to um, that, that we'll, we'll talk about in a second so as our top five um, of filtering out useful sources. So I guess to begin with that, does, it, does anybody have a um, recommendation for, for filtering out useful sources? Something I've started using recently. <coughs> yeah, can hear you, can I? You can, sorry, I didn't know if I had to push something to, <laughs> to get no. talking about. Um, okay, um, so something I've started using recently, um, literally I, I went to a HEO event last week and um, someone was telling me about Feedly. Um, so I this week I've been testing it out uh, just for personal, creating my own newspaper, if you like, um, the weekend papers, you know, so general news, interesting, somebody supplement type um, things. Um, I found it really visually interesting, but I guess I'm so used to the way my own newspaper is presented on the screen that I feel slightly uneasy about trusting that the content's feeding through. Yeah. So I think that's, at the moment, I keep double checking that what I'm seeing on my home page, my news screen, is what I'm seeing on my newspaper just to kind of get a bit of comfort that it's working properly, but I guess that'll come with time. Um, but any other suggestions on what might be useful for teaching? Obviously, I've not used anything yet. So So what's um, that? Feed me? Feedly. F-W-D-L-Y. Um, so you can create, I think there's different three themes. You can have like a list. Of, it's basically an RSS feed or um, blog links. So you've got to have a URL and you paste it in. Um, so I'm not sure it's applicable for every type of source. Um, so I'm not sure how photographs would go in, for example. Um, I've only really tested it in the last week, so anyone else been using it? Anyone else used it? 
Has, has anybody got any experience of using um, if this, if this, then that? I've played around with it. Um, and what, what, what have you found with that, Catherine? Um, yeah, because if you, if you post to one, the way that I've used it, if you post to one place, it will automatically post to other places. I haven't used it as like a curating tool. I, I've played around with it as well, but um, probably, you know, so I think it's one of those tools that you really need to sit down and think about, you know, uh, and it thinks about what you're going to be doing with all the all your resources. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I've sort of dipped into it and thought, right, I need a few days to, to really think about the recipes and how you're going to use yeah. them. I've right. actually been quite cautious of that type of thing. Um, mainly because anything that wants to take over posting to my Twitter and my Google wall or anything like that I'm really cautious about because you suddenly find that things appear on Twitter. This has happened to me once actually that I signed up for something and it said it would like to have access to my Twitter which I let it do and then it, it posted something to my Twitter wall that I didn't notice immediately because mm. I'm not that on top of Twitter. I tend to favourite things in Twitter really myself and that sort of goes on from what I used to do before I used Twitter which was to send myself emails about things and then folderize them. It's a bit I mean, no, I mean I think that's that's a really interesting point. I had a severe problem with people thinking I was peddling weight gain losses for about two months because that just kept getting posted to my Twitter wall over and over again, which is interesting. I mean I think what, something that I use a lot actually for curating is my Google bookmarks. Um, I mean, I, I know that's quite, again, quite old fashioned, but I find it really useful because whatever device I'm on, wherever I am in the world, everything's perfectly organized so I can get to whatever application that I need for that particular tool set. So, I mean, I've, I've, I'm very anal, but I've labeled up all of my bookmarks um, to have a particular toolkit for a particular job. And I just wondered, did anybody else does anybody else use bookmarks in that way as a as a potential curating tool? I used to use Delicious. Um, I, I used to use it quite a lot. Um, I haven't done recently, and I think it's because I've gone back to bookmarks. And I think it's because, like you said, because I use uh, Google and Gmail everywhere I go. If I sign in, I've got them all with me, and it's easy to find. So I've kind of gone back from social bookmarking to create curate things back to bookmarks. So, um, what about you, um, Claire, or the Claire, Claire Chambers? Have you, have you got any experience of, of curating, really? No, not really. Um, I'm finding it interesting, quite a lot of people are mentioning Google, because I'm not a huge Google user. And actually, this is my second ever Hangout, so stop <laughs> for everyone. Um, but I, I, I mean, I, up until recently, I have been studying myself, and I tended to use tools within my um, iPad, so I'd, I'd use things like iAnnotate for collecting journal articles, for example, bookmarks for collecting websites, so I guess I use different tools according to what it is I'm actually collecting at the time, um, and I, I hate to say it, I do still have folders of bits of paper. So, yeah, it's, for me, it's I, I'll use all different apps. I mean, I have used things like Deliver It as an RSS to, to gather things together. And coming back to the idea of posting things from one media to another, Deliver It will do that very nicely for you automatically. Um, but again, it depends how you manage things and how, how, how you use Twitter and how you collate these resources within the various social media. Yeah. So I think we've got another, uh, uh, Rod sneakily joined in, I sent him an invite to answer. Rod, George, just quickly introduce yourself. Rod? Rod, can you hear us? Well, Rod, oh, I can see, can anybody else, I can see Rod there, but he'll yeah, I can see yeah, Rod. can't speak. quite hear us yet. We'll get him to introduce himself uh, in, in a minute when he, when, he, when, he, when he wants to. So, Magda, do you... Do you use Google a lot for, or at all for curating? No, I've, I've not used Google, but I've just made a note that I want to try it out. I try out different bookmarking and curating tools, but I've, I never 
I've never managed to get into one that I really like and I'm, I'm trying out Scoop It again and Flipboard today um, and I still use bookmarking in, in my Firefox browser and I email myself things and I'm a sucker for post-it notes so I write things down on post-it notes but I want, to, I want to bring it all into one place and start yeah. sorting things more into categories and files so I'm looking for ideas and inspiration uh, how to just do that okay that's that's really interesting so Magda can you tell us a little bit more about scoop it please um, well it, it is again like um, flipboard where you can curate uh, by searching topics within scoop it you, you type in a few keywords and then it finds blog items, tweets, etc, all sorts of things off the internet that you can then pull into your page for that topic and uh, Chrissy has posted a really nice link to her uh, scoop it on smart device learning onto one of the communities so I've today tried to re-scoop things from there that I found useful into my scoop it because I'm trying to, to set up one on specifically Twitter in teaching and learning. So, because um, that's a good thing about Scoop It as well, that you can re-scoop other people's scoops. But I'm not finding it that intuitive to use. Um, for example, I've then gone on Google and done the same search for terms on there, and it's given me lots of useful things that haven't com come up in Scoop It. So I've then added the Scoop It bookmarklet to my browser but that's not working either so I, I don't know whether there's an issue with browser compatibility and that's also also the thing I want to be able to use it on my laptop on my iPad on my smartphone wherever I am if I see something useful on, on Twitter or uh, a news item then I want to be able to with one finger click really send it to that bookmarking account and then for it maybe automatically to be sorted in, into the topic that I, I want to, but don't know you whether should, that's possible. You should be able to do that. Um, you should be able to set uh, scoop it on your toolbar, and so then when you see a, a URL that you like, you can just click on it. But, what, device, um, what device is that on? On, on? on any device. I use it on my iPad and my laptop. Right. Um, what, br what browser are you in on your laptop? Chrome. Okay, so I'm I'm in Firefox on Mac, so I must try it out on a different one because I've yeah, had. But, but you can you can well I don't know, but I I can add it to my to my tool, toolbar and then just click and link. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. I found Scoop it really useful. Um, I do some outreach projects with school kids, mm -hmm. and uh, I want to send them or you know collate for them um, newspaper articles or uh, news type articles. On the issues we're discussing, so Scoop it's great for that. You know, then they can just look through all the articles and and, yeah. and easily find one that interests them. You know, um, great. so I found it useful. That that's that's thanks, Kay. Can can I just get Rod just to quickly introduce himself? Rod, you can take yourself off mute. Thanks. <laughs> Rod. Can you hear me okay, guys? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, good. Um, hi, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Rod Cullen. Um, I, I just fancied having a look in and seeing what you're all up to, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, in terms of uh, curating stuff, um, to be honest with you, it's something I wish I was a bit better at. Um, I, I, I use a lot of bookmarking uh, tools, but, but, but mainly just the things that are built into browsers. Um, I, I don't scoop them up in any in any particular way because um, that, that kind of works for me. Um, I do use um, OneNote, um, which I which I find really useful, um, which is a really good way of doing things like sending, um, keeping a copy of interesting emails and things like that. Particularly if you have some good feedback from from from, from people or something that you want to refer back to later. Um, and I've played around with Evernote a little bit uh, for the for the same purposes, although not to the not to the same extent. So I'm interested in it, but it's not something I do particularly well. That's, thanks, Rod. So somebody on the Google Doc. So Rod, just so you know, there's a Google Doc link in the chat, um, just for people to add in whenever they want to. Just going to try and put together a top five of 
tips for curating. Somebody wrote down Pinterest. Was that was that you, Sally? I know. Can say something quickly. Um, I, 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 before I got into the video chat, I noticed that um, you can actually watch this live from the Google Hangout without actually being involved in the. Um, in the call itself, um, and on the on the left hand side of the screen, if you move across there now, you'll see um, there's a there's a Q and A um, yeah. option. If you click on that, you can see that there are two or three people who are watching from outside who posted a couple of questions, um, mainly just to say, can can you see that we're can you see that we're watching? Ah, oh, that's absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Um, thanks, Rod. In fact, I'll <laughs> it is oddly voristic, Yeah, that people are, that people are watching that. <laughs> so let's just. And Rod had a question. Uh, hi, folks. Are you aware that I'm able to watch this without being in the call? Yes, we are now, Rod. Thank you very much for that. Um, let's respond to uh, Ian here, I think. Uh, Ian, me too, Rod. Wonder if the participants can see this. Ian, we can see that now. So if anybody wants to add a single question, please post it into this area and I will um, try our best to answer them as, as we need them. So, Kathleen, just quickly going back to that, do you use Pinterest for curating them? Um, yeah, not not in a work capacity, but in a personal capacity. So, uh, for example, when I was redoing my bathroom, I found it a good way to visualise and, and get bring all these ideas together. And I, I found it, um, I, I found the, the visualness of it great compared to something like Delicious, if I was just like bookmarking a long list of links. Um, it, it's a big difference because I don't actually have to go in and have a look at the link. I can just see at a glance what what that link is about because it it, it posts to it, it 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 brings the picture back from the link so you can kind of see uh, what it's about. Excellent. So I think on that Google Doc we've got quite um, hi Sue Beckingham. We're just gonna just gonna select that answer to say hello there. Everyone just give a quick wave to Sue. Um, so go, going back to the list that we're trying to put together, the top five, we've got quite a lot of applications there. Has anybody got like some you know, underlying actual tips as to what makes good curating? Um, tags. Tags. OK. Would you like to um, eludicate on that? Um, yes. Well, when I was using Delicious, um, if I had a link, um, just say, I don't know, I'm just gonna say a bike. I could tag it up with different tags, and then if I clicked on a tag, it would bring back all the links under that tag. Um, so you kind of slice your data in different ways. So you could like instead of filing it, you you tag it up, and then you can search via tags. I found that very useful. Actually, that's really helpful um, advice because um, some of the things that I use in teaching um, sort of cross lots of different subjects. So it'd be nice to be able to yeah. one. Sometimes you categorise them, um, and mm -hmm. we can only sort of categorise them in one way. But actually, using tags means yeah. I can find it. I think Picasa does that. I've got kind of a bit of an understanding of that. That's just obviously for photos, but I think you can do that in the same way, can't you? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah excellent. Thank you for that. That's really helpful. Excellent. So. I think my computer's just gone into momentary standstill, so unfortunately I'm not going to be able to flick between photos for a little bit, but can everybody still hear me okay? Yep. Yeah. Okay, excellent. So if um <laughs> if I could if we if we were to look at the uh, top five um tips then, would we say that maybe using RSS feeds would be one? Um be I Where's he gone? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tags you. would be another. <laughs> yeah. Who's, who's still here? Oh. So six people still here. Yeah, I'm, I'm still here. Yeah. I think I think one of them has to be you know any time, any place, any device you know that you yeah. can get yeah. access to your links because I think we all work in different places and different environments and it's being able to access all of that. Yeah, I think also following on from that is understanding how sometimes the different devices approach or they've got their own. Sometimes they have limited yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's it's knowing the best device for the best app, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Is anybody else in this hangout on an iPad? 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah. See. And can can you see the document they're talking about? No. Oh, no. Okay. I, I literally just got everyone along the bottom and whoever's talking in the uh, or just actually I'm not there, so I don't know who that Claire, the other Claire's uh, the big picture at the moment. Hello, Claire. Hello. <laughs> and I've got a, a a little button that says live in the top right corner, so I've got nothing else. Oh. And I'm frightened. There's a little arrow in the top left hand corner, and I keep thinking I should push it, but I'm a bit frightened if I push it, I might drop out. <laughs> I think I think if you scroll right, you just get you know how you can invite other people, and you can scroll up from the bottom to mute yourself and turn your video off. But that's all I can do with this. Okay. okay. And I can't see the chat either that they were talking about earlier, where it, um, external people were saying, "Oh, we can see you." Oh. Um, down the on on a PC down the left hand side, you've got chat Q and A. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know where that think that is on the iPad. I don't think any of those options are available on an iPad. Right. How strange. Or, no, on I'm... the left, all I get is invitations. Right. Yeah, I don't have the nice background thingy either, or where you can put masks on and things. So oh, yeah. I think you may <laughs> oh, need Sam's to download, <laughs> download oh, an Sam's, extra that, Sam's app back. We better go back to talking about curation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry about that. I'm back again. Sorry. <laughs> Sam, okay. we were just saying that as we, uh, I think probably about half of us are on iPads, we don't see the chat that you were talking about that you can see on a PC. So as just a kind of an, an aside, you know, something yeah. to make people aware of, I guess. Okay, yeah. thanks. Thank you for but, that. Is, is there another way that I can share a a link with you? Really? Um, I guess I guess if you put it on the original Google uh, Plus site, whatever's yeah. handiest, right. really. Mm -hmm. Okay, Catherine, would you be able to just Copy and paste that link onto the Google yeah. just so that people can get access to it if that's okay. Yeah, I'll try um, that now. And then um, we can we'll we'll come back to that in a second. Sorry my computer dropped out there. <laughs> um, so the question to come back to you then. Did did everybody have the opportunity to look at the two videos on the Bring Your Own Device for Learning? Yeah, I am seeing Sally nodding there. Um, Sally, was the one of the videos that um, resonated for you particularly? Yeah, I think the teacher one particularly, um, it seems to be what people tell me. I don't teach myself, but people who do teach tell me that they're f constantly disappointed with the f fact that students don't appear to want to do more than the minimum and that they're very much strategic learners, mm -hmm. modern students. They find out what you need to know and what you need to learn to pass the exam and that's the main things that they're interested in so getting people to students to understand that the subject is wider than just what they need to learn for their exams I think that would be something that if we could come up with a some advice or some help in um, people finding ways to keep that information and this is a good example actually cur curation so that they have this little resource of uh, materials and extra external links so that they can explore in in more depth so it's about learning in more depth and I think that's something that mobile devices can really help with you know you can listen to a podcast for example on a subject you can t listen to an expert talking about something in a podcast uh, out on on a bus on a train when you've got no connectivity I know that's less and less now but when you have got no connectivity you can listen to podcasts so all those kinds of things that can encourage people to learn the subject in more depth but just get excited by the subject I think that's the biggest disappointment for people who teach something that's their life's work and their passion is that students don't share that they just uh, they just want this bit of paper that say that they've got a degree excellent I, I, I reflected on that um, uh, one in January when I was uh, when I was taking part in this and at that time we were just talking about scoop it and I was using scoop it to share resources with my students and uh, the problem with scoop it is you don't really get an idea of whether they've read them or not um, and after reflecting on on that scenario I actually then moved to using Google uh, Google community and getting the students to upload their own articles um, you know, in the, it was in bioethics, so they were trying to find things in the current news that had a bioethics uh, issue. And whenever I got them to do the curation and commenting on each other's uh, articles, I got much more engagement than when I was posting them saying, oh, this, this is going to be interesting. So, so that was one little tweak that kind of um, promoted student engagement. Hmm. 
that's that's really that's really interesting, Kay. I mean, I think for me, it comes back to an issue of ownership, really, doesn't it? There, um, Claire Spencer, did you have something you want to add to that? Well, yeah, that's really interesting, Kay. Actually, because one of the things I've um, been thinking about a lot recently is peer-to-peer -peer learning. So, how students, because it's something I don't know about the rest of you, but it's something that's a bit of a kind of I don't know, an area, a black hole that we don't know much about is what do they do when they leave us in the evenings and in their spare time? Are they studying alone? Are they studying with others? And obviously I, I speak to some students and I can see small study groups and, and they, they learn a lot from each other in the class. I, you know, I get them to answer each other's questions. Um, but I, I, I'm interested in how we might be able to enable them to do more of that between them rather than for me to them and back, but actually amongst themselves and me be a kind of rather than facilitate just an observer to see what they're talking about but in a kind of I don't know how I would do that but it's something I've been thinking about because I think actually it would be more valuable to my students than um, necessarily me um, communicating with them but so has anybody got any experience of student to student um, learning I guess using social media? Claire Chambers do you want to pick up on that? Yeah, I just wanted to pick up, sorry, I'm going back a little bit now, um, on a point that Sally made, and so, something that, as I say, up until quite recently, I've, I've been a student myself, and um, it was a, quite a major issue to me when it comes to curation, and that was this idea around connectivity. I, I know, you know, it's not the bad old dark days, but equally, you cannot assume that you're going to have full connectivity everywhere you go. I know early on in my studies, I sort of suffered major failures a few times because I set out some some time you know for studying with my iPad I would have journal articles whatever if you've then got a link and you can't then for whatever reason follow that link and pick up a journal article then those two hours that you've set aside in that location are effectively wasted and this is one of the reasons why I started to use apps according to what the resource was so I would actually have a local copy of whatever it was. So if it was a podcast, for example, I would download it when I was at home before I left and then therefore be guaranteed that I could listen to it when I got where I was going. If it was a journal article, that's why I put it into I annotate so that I knew that I had a local copy. Um, I think that's not one to be overlooked lightly when we're talking about students who are on the go quite a lot, who are wanting to listen to podcasts, vodcasts, uh, remotely, potentially. Um, you know, we can't just assume that those those fast, high-level connections are always going to be there, especially not on public transport, you know, at sports centres, in public spaces where the students do tend to spend a lot of time. I, I think that's a really good point, Claire. Um, did, did anyone else want to pick up on that? Sally, did you have your hand up there? No, I didn't. Um, but I posted in the chat there about Secret Life of Students. I think one of the other big, big uh, issues that students seem to have at the minute is um, just being bombarded with this whole social media thing. Somebody posted in the Twitter yeah, chat me. Ah, about yeah. they always say less not more, they don't want more of this social media stuff because it's coming at them from everywhere and that particular um, series does highlight that, just how much interaction is going on electronically and I don't do that amount of interaction myself, thank God, because I couldn't cope with it. But I, the younger generation appear to have got used to this from a very early age and they do need I think some kind of guidance in terms of how they separate out the social media that's useful for them for learning from the social media that they are uh, just like chattering around all the time 24-7 almost. That's that's really interesting. Claire, did you want to pick up on that point? Because that is, you know, you I noticed that in the tweet chat as well last night. Do you want to just say the tweet that you said? and then just Basically, expand on that if that's okay. I did a quick hands up survey um, amongst five of my seminar groups last year, second years, about 75 students and everyone was on Facebook socially. I think about two of them had Twitter accounts and nobody was on Instagram, LinkedIn and I remember I asked another one, I think it was Google Plus, nobody was on any of them. Um, and they basically all said we want less rather than more online time. Um, but I think sort of since I posted that, I've been thinking about it a bit more actually, and I think some of it's a bit about it depends what we lead the students with. Are we leading with the technology or are we leading with the learning? And I think actually, if it's the learning is so compelling, actually the technology, as long as it's low key enough 
almost delivered by stealth. They don't really know they're doing it. Yeah. And, and it made me re reflect on a poll everywhere, a um, poll I did in a lecture last year, um, and it was just two or three questions I asked them in the very first lecture about their prior learning. And they, um, not everyone had brought their phone with them or had it on, but they just basically sent a text message to a number that was on the screen. Um, but I don't think anyone sort of realised they were doing it almost. It was, it, they didn't really have to make much effort. Um, and I think that's, sort of, for me, that's got to be the key is, is and I found getting in, in touch with Google today, Sam, as you well know, <laughs> quite a... Um, quite a difficult process. Um, I mean, it displays my terrible IT skills, but I think actually, if I was a student, that would be so totally, totally off-putting, and I could be doing a tutorial question or thinking about something else. Um, so I guess it's sort of what's quickest to learn uh, with the best outcome, I suppose. Maybe I'm thinking in accounting terms. <laughs> it's a cost-benefit analysis for me. <laughs> I, no, I think that's really interesting, Claire. I I, I had a similar experience. I was trying to teach people about the importance of narrative in communication and I thought a great way of doing that was to be breaking it down into a tweet. So I, I set up a, a workshop where Hello. I was going to get all, all of the students to basically tweet their Hello. research to and then yes. we're going to put that up on a okay, ah. strange voice from nowhere. <laughs> uh, we're going to put that up on yeah. a Hello. who? Okay, we're Hello. going to put that up on a tweet deck and Right. The okay. experience that I had though was that basically the non students had a Twitter account, so no. <laughs> we had to do it all via my um, laptop. And I think there is that danger sometimes that we assume mm. that the students are as digitally savvy as we're, we're led to believe. Um, Kay, I don't know if you've got any thoughts on that. <laughs> Sorry, I missed a bit of that. I was just taking a phone call. <laughs> We're ju just talking about um, that, you know, from Claire's point last night about the students wanting less, maybe less social media. And I was saying that I'd run a workshop where I was using Twitter, and none of them even had a Twitter account. Um, I was just wondering if you had any thoughts on, you know, student. Maybe we're assuming that students have a willingness to engage where it's, there's maybe not one there actually in the first instance. Yeah, I think um, I, I did something with first years with that, and uh, there was about 200 in the class, and. Um, we were actually using Google Docs, um, and I told them to bring uh, phones or tablets or whatever. Um, and then there was a Twitter thing that was an optional extra that they could comment on or share what they were doing as they went along through the exercise. And I would say about 20 or 30 of them made Twitter accounts during the course of the class, you know, because they wanted to be able to post their comments and see them and share them. So I think it just depends on the activity. And I think it goes back to, I think, what Claire was saying. Um, if it, it's about the learning, so they kind of wanted to share what they were doing, and um, we kind of made the thing a little bit competitive. So they kind of wanted to sort of communicate what they'd done and what they'd found. Um, so they were keen to engage with the technology then. But I think it, I think it does come back to, you know, oh, we're not just using this technology because I've come along and think it's always bang and great. But it's 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 engaging them first, thinking about that their learning and thinking about what what's going to engage them. You know, in terms of you know, engaging them with the subject or engaging them with the whole kind of process. Definitely. Sort of, you know. Um... I mean, Catherine, did you have, um, I mean, you, you know, obviously you do a lot of e-learning work. Did you have any, any thing on this? And also, you know, that clip where the teacher just says, you know, I'm putting all this effort in to put, get all these tools for the students to use and none of them are picking them up. Is that something that you've encountered? And if so, is it something that you could offer advice on? Um... I think what we've tried to do is use um, tools that are cross-platform um, and, you know, cross-device. So even if um, a student's got uh, an iPad, they could you could equally use it on a phone or an Android or a laptop. Um, so that's kind of the what we're trying to go for is is that cross-platform. Excellent. Thank, thank you. So Sally's just Sally's just mentioned Mendeley there, um, which is something I've come across as well. But Sally, do you want to just um, expand on what Mendeley is? Yeah, I, I've literally only just downloaded it, but I did hear about it at an event, oh gosh, two years ago, and thought that it was somebody from Mendeley speaking. I thought that sounds really, really useful. So it's a whole kind of way of organising papers that are of interest to you, research papers. Um, 
because you generally give out, or lecturers here tend to give out to their students references and say that's an interesting paper to go and read in more depth about that subject, um, Mendeley appears to be a way that you can organise that for yourself. And the nice thing is if you've written a paper or you've got your name on a paper, you can also uh, have that in there as well so you can sort of give yourself a pat on the back for the fact that you've got your name on a paper. But it, it's, uh, I'm just doing a bit of research at the moment about Google Glass and I've just found some papers. I've literally just, while we were talking, downloaded um, Mendeley and I've found some papers that I didn't know existed about Google Glass. So um, I wondered if anyone was actually recommending that students use that. I've never heard of it, <laughs> so I will look into it now. I mean, I, I, I have used Mendeley um, and I found it a little bit overkill for what I actually wanted to do. It's a good way of um, gathering resources, but you, it's, it's quite, when you're trying to actually interact with those res resources, you have tools available to sort of, I don't know, I just, I just found it, it's more a repository than anything else. So when it comes to actually interacting with your materials, it, I, I didn't find it suited my way of dealing with things anyway. It does appear to let you make notes about the uh, content. I know um, Andrew was going to do a bit of a session about Mendeley. Um, I think it was Andrew. Someone was going to do a session about it that actually kind of used it and felt it was a good idea. Maybe, maybe, maybe Mandalay is something we can write down for the other people in, in learning to um, to get involved with. Hi again, Magda. Hello. Um, so, Magda, we were just basically talking about um, tips that we could talk to that poor teacher in this scenario. Yes, who was a bit I managed to catch some of that. Um, who provided all of um, these tips. I mean, uh, judging from what everyone else has said, I'd say the first thing to say is don't worry, you're not alone. <laughs> you know, this is something that people have commonly um, encountered. And then picking up from what um, Kay and the two Claire's and Sally and Catherine were speaking about, maybe this idea of, you know, listening to the students and getting the students, what do they actually want? And is there, a, is there a participatory student model that we can um, use in there as well? Is that, is that something that would potentially appeal to you as a, as a solution to that problem? Um, have we looked at the student scenario at all? Um, we, the, well, in the, interest, in the interest of time, I think we were just going to focus on this teacher scenario. Yeah, so just, just a quick comment. If we are confused by the amount of information out there, and how must that feel for, uh, to, to a student? So I was trying to use Evernote this week for my own personal reflections to maybe see whether that could work. Uh, that's something I could recommend to students because that can be used on all devices and I've been syncing it and checking, oh, is it, um, can I access it on my iPad after I've done it on the computer, etc. cetera. Um, so for taking notes, it seems to be really good. I want to work out whether I can kind of um, include or bring in things I found online as well and articles and, and so on. That's brilliant, thank you. So, um, what I've got, uh, the, 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 the third, I think we've discussed really the two items today. We, we, we've prepared a top ten now that Catherine's put together and we've discussed that scenario a little bit. So I just wanted to finish off by looking at discussing an app that can help curate content and if people go to the um, the top 10 um, document now that's in Google Docs um, I think it'd be maybe a good idea if we were to pick one of these apps and then our, our homework if you will would be to um, practice using one of those apps um, and then report back the different ways that we use that app um, over the next day or so like that do people feel that's a, a fair thing to do would it be, would it be of use yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that'd be interesting. Yeah. Okay, excellent. So, basically, thank you, Catherine, for for curating this so beautifully. And <laughs> um, we've got. Um, is there is there any is there any? Well, let me put it out to you. Are there any of the the apps there that people um, would care to use? So we've got Feedly, IFTT, 
Delicious, Scoop It, Pinterest, Pinterest, OneNote, Evernote. Is, is there any that stand out for anyone in particular that they've really wanted to have a go at? Yeah, I want to look into Evernote and Scoop It further. Okay, I'm just leaving for one second, continue the conversation. <laughs> Uh, I, I just started using Evernote uh, about two or three months ago, so I'm just building up my use of that. So I would like to be compelled, I suppose, to explore it further. I'd be to have a go at that. I think I'm quite interested in um, having a look at Pinterest, actually, um, because I teach some master students who come from um, who, who do management. Um, masters and they come from quite a diverse range of undergraduate degrees so they could have done Chinese literature, medicine, accounting and finance, could have done anything. Um, so their, their learning styles are all hugely different and one of the things I'm interested in is how I can visualise numbers <laughs> um, for those students who, try, who don't see numbers but see in pictures. So um, I think I might see what I can do with Pinterest and get my creative juices flowing somehow. <laughs> Um, so I might look at that one. Can I have Pinterest too, yeah. please? <laughs> um, basically, because I already signed up for it, and I'm I'm of a mind to not sign up to too many. Yeah, I'm with you on that. <laughs> so, considering I signed up for it at the start of Bring Your Own Device for Learning, thinking I would uh, try and kind of visual do a visual expression of my experience. So, I've not really used it much yet. So, I'd really like to go in on that one with you. If that's all right. I think I'm going to revisit Delicious just to see if it's changed since I last used it and if it's gotten any better. I think <coughs> I'm, I'm going to do the same actually with that, Catherine. And I'm going to have a look at um, Delicious because I really like my Google Bookmarks, but I have heard quite a good things about Delicious as well. So yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll have a look at that. Has, 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 every, has everybody committed then to something? Yeah. No, it's just me. And I, I would quite like to look into that. Um, what is it? Feedly? If this, then that. Oh, if this, oh, then that. Yeah. Okay. So, will you will you be cooking us up some um, mm. some recipes then, Claire, over the next few days on if this, then that? Lord knows. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess yeah. So, it'd be really interesting to see over the next few days if people are using this. You know, and it could just be the case of tried Pinterest, didn't work on a professional level. Or what I imagine might be the case, Catherine, you tried mm -hmm. Delicious again and we discovered that Google Bookmarks is better yep. um, in the company line. But it'd be really great if people can tweet to each other, specifically the people in this in this Hangout as well, to, to hear um, feedback on that. That'd, that'd be absolutely great. So has, has everybody got access to the um, Google Doc that I sent around? Like, has everybody got, is everybody able to look at a, a, a copy of it now? No. Where did you store it, Sam? Just remind us. So it's in a link um, that that I've have put in the chat just now, and that for people that don't have chat, Catherine very kindly copied onto the um, Google Events page at the very top. Okay. I can also tweet out if that would help. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I, I guess I probably can see it once I finish this. I don't want to touch my iPad screen because I can't okay. see anything except you all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's, that's, fair, that, that, that's fair enough. So. Um, basically, I'll give. What I'll say is, if we give people until um, four o'clock to edit that if they want to, and then at, at four o'clock I'll submit it um, to everybody, just as our, you know, as something that we we put together um, off the back of this, and then we can also submit this broadcast, and people can look at that and um, hopefully get something from what I think has been a really productive and interesting um, Google Hangout. Definitely, it has, it's been definitely. my first one and, sorry, sorry Kay, carry on. No, go on ahead. I was just going to say it's, it's been my first one and I've really enjoyed it, it's been great fun. Um, and actually I'm really pleased to have done it because I can't actually make the 8 o'clock um, tweet chat tonight, so I feel like I've actually engaged in um, some activities on the curating with you all rather than doing some things on my own, so I'm really thankful for that. That's great. Kay, did you want to say something? Yeah, no, no, just just really uh, just really enjoyed it. It's been very, very useful. Um, lots of ideas coming up to reflect on again. <laughs> Super. So did anybody else want to have any, any final thoughts before we uh, stop the broadcast? 
Um, yeah, thanks, Sam. Um, uh, can I just make sure I've got everybody's um, Twitter ID because I did fail on connecting on day one to connect to everybody on Bring Your Own Device for Learning. So I've got Catherine's. She's just given put hers in the chat, and I'm already following Claire. I think I might already be following both Claire's, possibly. Am I following you, um, Claire Spencer? I think you are because you put okay. the Secret Life of Students to my... Ah, uh, okay, I did, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I think you might be. I'll check. Otherwise, I'll follow you and you can follow me back. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. Cheers. Um, why do, yeah, and if everybody could maybe add their Twitter handles, I guess, to the um, the Google Doc, and then people have got it from there as well, so that would be good. So if everybody's happy then, I'll stop the broadcast, and what I'll say is if everybody can just look at the Google Doc, edit it by 4 o'clock, then I'll post it, and then I'll instantly post this link up now for the YouTube so people can get an idea of how hard we've been working in the past hour. And uh, I look forward to seeing some of you at Tweet Chat tonight, some of you face to face tomorrow, and throughout the rest of the week. So, goodbye, everyone. Thanks for organising it. Bye. Thanks, Thanks a lot, Sam. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.